Come on, Neil, you're nearly there. Just try to relax and focus on your breathing. Now, what I do in situations like these is I take a deep breath and then very slowly release that breath through my... Situations like these? When have you ever been stuck halfway out of an air duct while being pursued by heavily armed guards intent on strapping you down and yanking out your intestines, huh? All right, Neil, calm down. Don't forget, they can't kill you. You're immortal. No, you're right. I can't die. Which makes the thought of being unzipped and having my organs scooped out so much more appealing. What we need is uh, some kind of lubricant. (laughs) I know. No, no, no. Absolutely not. Sorry, Neil, but we're out of time. Look, I'll use some of my own spit. Hang on. There you go. Look, I'm, I'm, I'm sure this could work. No, Neil. It's the wrong viscosity. Viscosity? What? Are you a bloody chemist now? Look, trust me. I've got this. Oh, Jesus. Now, due to your elevated position, it might take a couple of flybys to get the angle right. So, close your eyes and mouth, and I'll let you know when I'm done. Uh, Okay, brace yourself. (laughs) Amanda, do we have a fix on them yet? Uh, no, Commander. Our surveillance cameras have gone down. What about motion detectors? Dead, sir. Apart from boots on the ground, we're running blind at the moment. I see. Thoughts, General? As I suspected, Commander, it must be this blasted bird. Not only is it equipped with chemical weapons, which it has used with devastating effect on our guards, but it must also possess some sort of jamming device that scrambles our surveillance systems. Professor, what do we know about these chemical weapons? The toxicity of the actual compound is off the scale, while the bird appears to be using a PWRP delivery system, which is extremely effective at short range. PWRP? Personal Orifice Ordnance Projectile. I've not come across one of those systems before. That is because I have just made it up. Do you like it, Commander? Uh, yes. It's fine. P-O-O-P. Poop. It spells poop, Commander. Yes, very good, very good. It is most fitting, is it not? General, thoughts? Poop. It's a bloody good acronym, Commander. Memorable and does exactly what it says on the tin. Well done, Professor. You absolutely nailed it. Thank you, General. No, not the bloody acronym, General. I mean, what are your thoughts about the weapon? Oh, I see. Uh, Must be next generation alien tech. I tell you, it's getting increasingly hard to keep up with these little green blighters. Right, everyone. We have two highly dangerous fugitives on the loose. We now need to focus all our energies on finding them. Come on, Neil. We've got to move more quickly. Hang on. I'm still trying to get all your shit out of my eyes. God, it really bloody stings, you know. Sorry about that. I tried to direct it as much as I could, but it was a tricky trajectory. Just a couple of little squirts would have done it. There there was no need to empty your entire guts all over me. Hey, will you just quit your bitching? It worked, didn't it? It's all right. Keep your feathers on. (sighs) So now what? I mean, where exactly are we heading? How about through that big door? Okay, so where does that lead? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? You're meant to be my guide, aren't you? Spiritual guide, Neil. I'm not a Sherpa or a sodding tour guide. Which is lucky, as my sense of direction is awful. I spent nearly a week in those bloody air ducts trying to find you. So no poring over the schematics of this facility and hatching some audacious breakout plan, then? No. Brilliant! So, what if we walk through that door and straight into the muzzles of umpteen machine guns? Well, we're just going to have to risk it. Go on, you go first. Why me? You can't die. Whereas I doubt my feathers will keep their lustrous shine if a hail of angry bullets tears through them. Oh, God. All right, then. (sighs) Try inhaling slowly through your nose, Neil, while counting to four. And that's going to protect me against armour-piercing bullets, is it? Not as such, Neil but it might help with the pain. Really? Oh, God. Go on, then. Get behind me. I don't believe it. Bloody hell, it's the fugitives. Here, lad, friend. Go you. on. Keep your gun. Ah! Ah! Ow! Ah! 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 Ah, 
Ah, there you are, God. Sorry to disturb, but there are a couple of officials wishing to speak to you. Uh, what? They're not in the diary. I mean, shall I just tell them that you're too busy? Well, I am at a rather delicate moment here with this prototype, Ruby. I wouldn't want to accidentally cause some kind of nuclear chain reaction. Oh, no. <laughs> we wouldn't want that. I'll tell them to make an appointment. Hold on. Who are they again? Um, I think they said internal investigations. Just another couple of dreary corporate suits, I'm afraid. You know, I could easily send them on their way. No, perhaps I'd better see them. Show them through to my new breakout zone, would you? Is that the bit that looks like a child's play area? Yes. Do you like it? I honestly don't know what was wrong with your leather sofa. Oh, the leather couch was old, half asleep me. This new studio, with all its space, light and now breakout zone, is the newly reinvigorated and creative me. Hmm. Shall I serve lemonade? That would be lovely, Ruby. All this tinkering with the fusion generator has made me very thirsty. There we go. Fresh lemonade. Oh, um, oh, right. Uh, uh, thank you, thank you. Are you all right there, June? Would you prefer to sit on a proper chair? Um, well, uh, if... Oh, uh, don't fuss, Ruby. Nothing wrong with these bean bags. Isn't that right, June? Uh, yes. <laughs> it takes a bit of getting used to. <laughs> exactly. When I found this space, I thought, let's have one of those vibrant breakout areas with bean bags, board games and lots of cake. And lo, it did come to pass. <laughs> oh, f fudge finger, David. No, I'm fine, thank you. So how can I help you both today? Well, uh, we have a couple of matters to discuss. The first pertains to a Mr. Neil Taylor. Oh yes, Neil, my protégé. Yes, I'm afraid that the accidental immortalisation of said individual has caused problems for a number of the firm's divisions. Oh, don't worry. I've got that well in hand. You see, I've given him this mission to do all manner of good in the world, which I hope you'll both agree is a fantastic use of such a free-flowing resource. Uh, yes, we, uh, we have recently learnt about your uh, mission. <laughs> the problem is, God, even though we know that you meant well... It is having an unfortunate domino effect. Domino effect? What do you mean? His activities are increasing usage levels all over the place. From stimulating um, niche sexual desires in a co-worker through to being the focus of a manhunt in a secret government facility. Mr Taylor is triggering all manner of leaks in the system. He's like a virus, God. You know, and like a virus, he needs to be contained. Uh, at least until collections can have him, you know, properly processed. So I presume you want me to stand him down, then? Oh, yes, that would be marvellous. Would you mind? David, what was his other matter? Oh, yes, uh, that's a bit closer to home. It has come to our attention that you have been expanding beyond your designated remit. For example, this new studio space. Lovely though it is, well... It hasn't been officially assigned to you. No, but uh, it was just sitting empty, and uh, so I thought I'd uh, repurpose it as my new creative space. Though it wasn't actually empty, was it, God? It mainly was. But what about the internal communications department? I mean, this was their office. Oh, uh, was it? Uh, no one told me. But didn't you notice all the desks, filing cabinets, and surely most obvious of all... The 50 members of staff? No, no, but perhaps they were all out on their lunch break. I'm sorry, God, but I find that very hard to believe. What's more, can you please explain the meaning of all these drawings and designs that you have plastered all over the place? It almost looks like you're planning to build another universe. Yes, it, um, it uh, does, doesn't it? Uh... And that, um... That pulsating orb thing that we saw on the way in, I mean, was that some kind of star or something? Well observed, June. It's a prototype for a new range of ultra-mega stars, the like of which have never been seen before in all of creation. But you, you can't just start building again. 
There are no resources available for such a massive undertaking. Oh, I'm sure that's not true. And just think of all the savings I've already made by getting rid of that ridiculous internal what's-it department. You know, I'm sure if you have a proper look around this place, you'll find lots of other useless departments stuffed full of dull people doing pointless things. I'm sorry, God, but all of these departments are essential for the smooth running of the company. Isn't that right, David? It certainly is, June. If you are going to carry on in such a cavalier way, God, then I'm afraid we're going to have to take this all the way to the top. Yes, the top. Ah, the top. Ah, I remember that place. So, do you think we lost them? (laughs) Well, I'm, I'm no longer being shredded with hot lead, so... I guess we have. Did it work, then? Did what work? That breathing exercise I gave you. Fuck no. Every one of those bullets stung like a thousand bees mainlining battery acid. Oh, that's a shame. You probably need more practice. A breathing? (laughs) No, Bird. I need body armour and a spiritual guide that doesn't lead me straight into an army barracks. I told you, spatial orientation isn't my forte, Neil. You try being a multi-dimensional entity trapped in a mono-dimensional organism. It's a complete head fuck. Anyway, this must be the bowels of the facility. I wonder what they keep down here. Oh, help me. Shit! What's that? What's what? Over there behind those steel bars. What sort of foul, ugly monstrosity is that? Hello, little fella. Don't be scared now. Hey, what are you doing, bird? Don't don't get so close to it. It'll probably rip your wings off, the vile abomination. Don't be an arse, Neil. Look, he's shivering and scared. Help me, please, help me. See? He's in distress. Honestly, bird, keep your distance. He's behind bars for a reason. Who are you? How did you get here? Well, that's obvious. He fell out of Satan's ugly tree and hit every branch on the way down. Neil! I am Blurp, from the planet Flegrop. An alien? Wow! Blurp? Even his name is but ugly. Neil, I won't tell you again. This is a sentient being, and one of God's creatures. Show him some more compassion. Right. Sorry about my companion, Blurp. He has been through some painful ordeals recently. I understand. I too have suffered greatly at the hands of these people. Ah, but did they give you the anal probe? No, yes. Every day for two of your half years. Oh, hang on. I hope they cleaned it properly afterwards. God knows what sort of intergalactic gunk you might have left on it. Neil... Is this really the sort of person you want to be? You have been sent by God to help all creatures, regardless of their physical appearance. Okay, okay, enough of the sanctimonious lecturing. Anyway, it's not just his looks. Get a whiff of that. He might be a tiddler, but he sure makes up for his lack of stature with one hell of a demon stench. I have been imprisoned here for 50 years. Of your half years. I'm so sorry. It must have been awful. Yeah, well, I've been stuck in a crappy seaside town for 40 years. Hmm, not really the same sort of thing, though, is it, Neil? And before that, I was trapped in my crashed spacecraft for over 2,000 years. Oh, that's terrible, isn't it, Neil? Yes, well, we all have our crosses to bear. Um, For example, Burke, um, despite working at Blackstone's for 20 years, I was still passed over for promotion. And and, and you know who got the job? Do you? No, sorry. Please, please tell me. Honestly, Blip, there's no need to reply. Let's get you out of there. (laughs) Hmm, shitting all over Burp's cell. He's going to love you for that. Just wait and see. Jeez, no wonder it almost burnt my eyes out. Eastward as fish and chips, Neil. It turns out that it is quite the toxic brew when marinated inside a seabird. There you go. It's burnt clean through the door's control panel. Come on, Blurp. You're free at last. Oh, thank you. Thank you. 
but his stupid spindly legs will slow us down. Oh, and what about that smell? Neil, remember your mission. An injustice has been done, and we can help remedy it. An injustice has been done, and we can help remedy it. Oh, God, don't you ever get bored with all that holier-than-thou guff. What's the update on that latest contact, Amanda? That bird has put another six of our men in the infirmary, while Neil remains impervious to concentrated machine gun fire. Options, General? A low-yield tactical nuke would probably do it, Commander. We've got plenty of those knocking around. Yes, but what about collateral damage, General? We're on a war footing, Commander. And in a war, there will, I'm afraid, be casualties. Yes, but if while waging that war we can somehow avoid vaporising ourselves along the way, that would be an altogether better outcome, don't you think? You could always threaten to shoot his mother. Now look here, Professor. We're not savages. Oh, says the man willing to let off a nuclear bomb. Hmm, could be worth a try. Amanda, is Mrs Taylor still on site? Yes, she's not been able to leave since lockdown. But, sir, you're not really going to... And do we know where the fugitives are now? Uh, yes. Pinned down in storage, Bay 6. Excellent. Bring Mrs Taylor up here and let's get this messy episode brought to a satisfactory conclusion. So, so what now, Seagull, huh? I mean, we've walked around this whole bloody area, but there's absolutely no way out. We're trapped. Don't despair, Neil. What I do at times like this is take a deep breath and then very slowly release that breath through my... Really, Bird? You think your poxy breathing exercises are, are, are going to help us? My ship will take us home. Well, it's better than just giving in to fear and panic, Neil. Focused breathing centres the mind and calms the turbulent seas of a febrile and fearful soul. My spaceship, it's right there behind you. So, is that what you used to do all day when you were hanging out with the other angels? Breathing? <laughs> I mean, it's not exactly difficult, is it? Look, I'm doing it right now. <sighs> I will wake it with a flag rock mind forge. Don't be such a dickwad, Neil. The Seraphic Congregation do so much more than just breathing. We unite together to balance the universe in a... Oh, oh look, I've achieved Nirvana. <laughs> not so hard after all. Perhaps dickwad was too kind. Complete and utter asshole might be more fitting. Hang on, what's that droning sound? Shit! Look at that! How did we miss that? I thought it was the boiler. Never mind. Old Twerp here has come good. A real bloody spaceship. Wow! Does it have laser cannon and, and photo torpedoes? No. We are a peaceful race. We have no need or desire for weapons. No, no, no. Oh, disappointing. Come on. Let's get on board. Blurp, will you be able to smash through these walls? Yes, once the antimatter drive has fully rebooted. Neil, what are you doing? I'm looking for some air freshener. This ship stinks. What's wrong with your race, Burke? Your home planet must reek. Look, Neil, there's no time for that. You need to strap yourself in. <laughs> Oh, come on, bird. We're in a confined space, for Christ's sake. Sorry, Neil. It's all the stress. Oh, the sweet odour of a flagropian spring morning. Thank you. It's nice to be appreciated for once, even if it is just for my flavoursome fart. You two are as disgusting as each other. Oh, God. I think I'm going to puke. There is an incoming call. I will put it up on the screen. Ah! No, wait. It might be... Mr. Taylor, you are to give yourself up immediately. Do you hear me? Mum! Listen, whatever they said to you, you've got to believe me. I am not a human-alien hybrid. I am your adopted son. Then who's that beside you, then? What? Oh, you know him. That's my friend, the the, the seagull. <laughs> no, on the other side. Hello, I am Blip from the planet. Oh, oh, him. Uh, yeah, he's he's uh, he's an orc. Oh, foul-looking thing, isn't he? An orc? 
So not one of your alien friends, then? No, I told you, he's a, uh... Fictional character from Lord of the Rings. Well, uh... Lies, Mr. Taylor. That's all I'm hearing from you right now. In fact, your life has been one big lie, hasn't it? No, no, it hasn't. Well, because of your lies, I might lose my life. What? It's true, Neil. If you and your companions don't give yourselves up right now, then Mrs. Taylor will be shot. The antimatter drive is fully online. We can now depart. Yes, come on, let's bust out of this godforsaken place. We can't. What about Mum? She'll be fine, Neil. Once we've gone, they'll let her go. Probably. You've never liked my Mum, have you, Bird? Come on, Neil, be honest. Really? What's there to like? I will surrender myself, Commander, if you will let the old woman and these two companions of mine go. Old woman? Ah, bloody rude. Cracking idea. What do you think, Commander? Neil, we can't give up blip. But we can sacrifice my mother. There will be no deals with alien scum. You have five seconds before we shoot her. No, wait! Five, four, three, two... What's happened? Hello, team. God! Sorry to intrude like this. I I just thought you might need a helping hand. Almighty God. What a complete honour it is for you to grace us with your presence. Well, I know I shouldn't make a habit of it, uh, what with all those issues relating to free will, but uh, having got back in touch with my Old Testament self, I couldn't help poking my nose in. My mother, do you know if she's... Don't worry, Neil, she's fine. I lent heavily on the conscience of one Lieutenant Amanda Roper, who disarmed the commander at the last moment. Ah! Thank you. Well, it was the least I could do after you saved Blurp here. It's just the sort of altruistic behaviour I was looking for when I gave you my commandment. Well done. Well, I couldn't exactly leave him there, could I? I mean, not after everything he's been through. Come again? Unbelievable. I also had a lot of fun mucking around with their surveillance cameras. Not exactly bringing down fire from on high like in the old days, but still strangely satisfying. Anyway, mustn't keep you. Good luck on the next part of your mission. Cheerio! Right, Twerp. Let's hit Warp Factor 10 and get going. I've got the second half of a hot date to conclude. I can't believe you took all the glory for freeing Blurp, Neil. I'm not one for blowing my own trumpet, but you could have at least mentioned my... Yes, 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 don't worry. Next time God visits, I'll put in a word for you. Ah, goodness, Bird. It's all me, me, me with you, isn't it? Right, here we go! So, Director, everything you need to know is in this file. Thank you, David. And, as we speak, the exact whereabouts of Neil Taylor is where, exactly? I'll just check. Well, uh, according to Special Ops, he's heading into orbit on board a Flagropian scouting vessel. I see. Pretty impressive for one so lowly. Still, it's surprising what can be achieved regardless of how far you may have previously fallen. Don't you think? Uh, yes, Director. However, it is time to bring Neil back down to Earth. Will that be all? Yes, thank you, David. And good work. Samantha, can you get me fate on the line, please? Certainly, Mum. Time to call in a favour. This episode of Eternal Strife was recorded during lockdown in the UK. Eternal Strife was written, directed and recorded by Bruce Windward and featured the voices of Angela McIntosh, Mark Crozer and Bruce Windward.